seven more days. Seven more days. Well, technically eight. Until my surgery. And I am so excited. They did give me my results back for the infections. And um, it was two bacterial infections and a staph infection. It all happened so fast. And one minute, I'm excited that I'm finally going to get a surgery that I've been wanting to get forever. And then next thing you know, I'm just wondering whether or not I'm going to die. What made me want to have surgery is the fact that I was a teenage mother. I got pregnant at 16 and had my daughter at 17. With that, I gained 60 pounds, and after I had her, I just never went back to my normal weight. Not only that, but I just had a lot of saggy skin um, and extra skin. No matter how much I worked out, that belly fat was just really stubborn. And I always wanted to get some type of surgery. I thought that, hey, since I'm getting the lipo, I might as well put it to the backside. I went to get lipo, extended tummy tuck, muscle repair, and also a Brazilian butt lift. What made me want to get the surgery is because I wanted to look like how I felt on the inside. On the inside, I loved myself uh, for who I was, no matter my weight. And it took a lot for me to get to that point to where I loved myself. I wanted to be able to wear certain clothes that I normally wouldn't wear because my body shape wouldn't take to it. So that's how I, I found them. I found them through a friend and I went on social media and I seen all the different girls who received their surgery there. So I was really confident with the results that I seen. So I decided to go with them. So the way that they do the way that they do their consultations isn't face to face. So what I did is I contacted um, a young lady who had surgery with them before and I sent her pictures naked pictures of the front and of the back. That way she can let me know what I needed and give me an estimate of how much it would be. So I sent that to her and it was about a $200 deposit for me to book and secure my date. So I remember it was February 14th on Valentine's Day that I sent my deposit on Cash App and I set my date for May 19th, 2018. I was so happy. I was thinking finally, I was kind of scared, but I was so excited to finally get a surgery that I've been wanting. After I booked everything, everything was settled, I got the day, um, and it was getting closer to the time. Um, I started getting a little nervous, but I was so excited to get it that I didn't really think too much about it. I'm here at the surgery place, I'm nervous. We went to this one place and then they told us it's not that place. We're gonna go somewhere else. <laughs> so I'm just sitting here. I think I've ever been more nervous in my life. Y'all, when I say I'm scared, I mean like I'm freaking scared. I was excited, but now I'm freaking scared now. Like, they did that and blood got everywhere. Like, oh my god. This is crazy. I don't know what I got myself into. I really don't. I was really just waiting to meet Gladys because she's the person that um, was the, the face of everything. Um, so she finally came in um, after her husband. I, I met her husband earlier. He actually was the first person I met. Um, and he let us know, you know, sometimes of course this happens to people. Um, and if it does, just to come back and he'll help us. And uh, from there, my friend ended up, ended up leaving. So I... I was there by myself, just waiting, and Gladys ended up coming in. I spoke with her. I was originally supposed to get a breast done and uh, everything like that, but she let me know that it would be an issue because I was getting too much done. Having an extended tummy tuck and also having my breast done would have been an issue. They started prepping me around 10 p.m. Um, they took me to the back and... Um, I just remember, so everything's like flashing back to me. So I remember going in, and as soon as I walked into the door, there was about there was a sink there, and then on the side there was a, a flap door, like the swinging door, to 
to where my surgery was at, and then there was also a room to another room, if I remember. Um, and then I just remember, like, wow, it's really small in here, and there was about six people in there, and there was a small table, and I was like, this looks nothing like it looked like on Snapchat. <laughs> so I go in, and I remember him asking me a question, and next thing you know, I was out. And um, I woke up, I don't remember what time I woke up, but I woke up with just the bandages on me, and I was in a lot of pain. And it was kind of just like, what the heck just happened? Because everything happened so fast. And I remember waking up, and the nurse coming to check on me, um, and I couldn't feel my legs. And everything was just really, I was just really sore. Then I woke up and then the nurse came in and she was like, okay, we need to take a shower now. I'm about to, I'm about to take a shower right now. But I haven't even looked. Like I haven't looked to see what's under there. weird so I'm about to stand up for the first time and, and I was thinking like a shower after after surgery like I you know I, I, I was really confused on that um, but I got up they helped me up and um, I walked to the shower and there was a seat there for me to sit on and she was saying okay she gave me soap that was in a container like that you usually would give a urine sample. There was soap in there and she's like, okay, wash yourself. And at this point, I'm like, even still thinking back to it, I'm still like drugged out on whatever they gave me. And I just remember hunching over, taking a shower, um, just looking down at everything and um, my stitches and there was like blood everywhere. And, and then I left um, I went back into the room, I was having a hard time going to sleep, and I left the next day um, back home to the United States. I was trying to get an Uber back to cross the border, but I think they said they didn't have any or something like that, so the nurse ended up calling one of her friends, and um, they picked us up, and I remember just walking, like, hunched over, and in a lot of pain. They gave me a bag, uh, before I left, they gave me a pink bag that had some um, spray. Um, I think they gave me tramadol and they gave me two other medicines. And um, I remember going into the car and expecting him to drive me across the border. Um, but he had, he dropped me off at this corner where this there was this guys out there with these wheelchairs. So he was saying, you know, they'll take you on the wheelchair and they'll take you across the border. So I didn't care how I was getting back. I just wanted to get back. I hop into it. I go on the wheelchair and I think he, I gave him like $5 and he only took me to the border line. Um, and I remember him pushing me on the streets and every bump I was just feeling and it was hurting so bad. Um, and then he took me to the line where the border was at. And he took me to another lady. And the, he was like, she's, you know, he was telling me in Spanish, she can take you across the border with the wheelchair. You'll have to pay her $20. So I was just like, whatever, just get me there. And my friend was next to me, thank God. And they let us go to the front of the line and um, I crossed the border on the wheelchair. My friend got the car and he drove me all the way back home. But I was bleeding. I remember I was bleeding so much. It was a grip of blood that was coming out and I had to keep pouring uh, my drainage out. And it was so much pain. I was in so much, oh my goodness, I was in so much pain. But I ended up going home and ended up resting. I got home and I remember I followed the directions um, that they gave me, you know, make sure you you clean your wounds every day and um, make, make sure you wear your faja like 24 seven basically. Um, I had to send pictures to, they have someone that you send pictures to every day to make sure 
you're okay. Uh, so for the first two weeks, oh my goodness, the first two weeks were hell. So just to update everyone, my pain like is on 10. Um, like I'll do fine for a little bit when I'm on my pain medicine. And then like around the fourth hour, like everything just comes hitting me at once. And I finally was able to get some sleep or whatnot, but I feel like if one of my incisions are coming off or something, it just hurts. It hurts really bad. I was basically taking care of myself. I had to, you know, change my, you know, like clean myself all the time um, by myself, walk by myself with no assistance, cook for myself. My, my best friend came over about four times and she helped me out when she could. My best friend came to come and take care of me for like three hours, but she had to leave. So I've been having like a hard time, a really hard time getting up and using the bathroom and stuff like that. Uh, but other than that, I was really on my own and I just remember being in so much pain and um, I had to like lift myself up and sit down and mind you, I had a, a muscle repair and I had an extended tummy tuck. So I was just in so much pain every time lifting myself up and sitting down and I was having such a hard time sleeping. Um, but I took, I constantly took pain, the pain medicines. And they also gave me um, some other medicine that was supposed to help, but it actually just made me very, very sick. I was throwing up. Um, it was just a really horrible process, but I figured this is just part of it, get through it. Um, then after about a week and a half, I started noticing something like going on with my body. My stomach started getting a little bigger, and then I started getting excruciating pain like on my lower abdomen. So I went to the doctor yesterday. <sighs> And they told me, um, they did a, a CAT scan, and they told me that I had a lot of fluid down here, but when I'm like researching, they said that the way you would know it's fluid is it would be wavy, but I, I don't see that. Like, I don't see the fluid or nothing, so I don't know what's going on. And um, it was getting to the point that it was hurting when I was walking, like, it was just really bad. And I kept telling them, you know, I, I think something is wrong, you know, and she was like, no, everything looks fine. And mind you, it's only through text, so nobody's, they're not checking on me physically. They're just saying through the pictures that everything's fine. So um, I knew something wasn't right. Um, I went to about three or four doctors, include like emergency clinics and actual emergency rooms, and none of them would see me. They made, they made me feel like crap, basically, for the fact that I went to go get surgery in Mexico. They wouldn't touch me, they wouldn't see me, nothing, um, because of the fact that it's a liability to them. But they, I mean, I'm, I'm going through it and feel like nobody's there for me already. And the doctor's making me feel like crap for going to get surgery in Mexico. And finally, I went to one of uh, AV hospital, into the emergency room, and he treated me like crap. But they ended up seeing me. Um, he was like, oh, okay, we'll do a CT scan. He sent me home with some antibiotics. And a week passed, and I was like, still, something just is not right. Like, I could feel it. My body's telling me that something's not right. Um, I thought that I was just swollen, and I ended up putting a heating pad on where, my, where I was swelling at, and I ended up burning myself because I was numb and I couldn't feel it. I was like, something's not going right. Something is not going right on. Like, I'm still in pain. My stomach isn't going down. Like, I need to go back into the emergency room. So I went back and they still gave me an issue, but they checked again and they seen that. Um, I had built up fluid and I also had an infection and they had to do emergency surgery. So at this point, I am just like, my mind is just, I'm just out of it. I was so scared. And um, at this time, I was seeing some girls who were in the hospital, you know, all of them, we had surgery about a week apart from each other, the same place, uh, went to the same place. Um, all of them were in the hospital and one of them had a blood, had an infection in her blood and the other one, I guess they put her uh, fat in her muscle and then the other one caught an infection and I was just like, God, like, please let me be okay. I was scared and I was mute because I'm like, 
I'm seeing this happening to them and I'm just praying to God that it just does not happen to me. It's flew it out. And that was June 12, 2018. And, you know, I'm supposed to be getting, I was supposed to be going on a trip because my birthday was, is coming up on, uh, was coming up on June 22nd. And I'm like, okay, I'll take out this fluid and that's it. And they were telling me before that if you have fluid, then they can just take a syringe and take it out. So I'm thinking it's going to be something easy, but they're like, we're going to have to admit you to do surgery. And I, I just remember just being really quiet, just stuck. And they admit me, um, and I'm like, okay, we're going to have to do the surgery either tonight or tomorrow morning. Don't eat anything. So the person who comes to the surgery, he comes in, and he's a jerk, too. Like, he's just really mean. And he's like, yeah, we're going to have to do these incisions. And I'm like, okay, so how big are these incisions? You know, I was like, I understand this might be your personality, but I'm not a surgeon, so I need to know what the heck is going on with my you know what you're gonna do so he was making it seem as if he was gonna do these small incisions and remove the fluid that way came out it turned out that it wasn't small incisions at all um so the next day they come prep me for surgery and i still remember just being really quiet um, by myself i just remember being really quiet and then them coming to prep me for surgery i'm just waiting and i'm just quiet like not saying anything and then they take me to the surgery room and he was like, okay, we're gonna, you know, put you to sleep now. I just remember him, I forgot what he said, and then the room just went, like, white. And I was just, just like, I don't know, at that point I just didn't care, like, just do what you have to do. It's just kind of the mentality that I had. And then I wake up from surgery, and it wasn't small incisions, it was, it was a big, hole basically in my stomach. Um, not only was it a hole but on the inside pockets um, there was a hole in there as well that they had a stuff with foam and um, about to they they had attached a wound back to me. while I was in the hospital. So I'm in pain from that, and I'm in pain from the fact that I just had surgery two and a half weeks ago or three weeks ago. And um, just, um, the wound people came and they um, took the phone out. But while she took the phone out, it was stuck. He put the wrong phone in me, so. She was yanking, and mind you, like, there was nothing, they could only put lidocaine on there, but there's really nothing they could do to none of it, so I'm still feeling it. Since he put it, the wrong phone, the phone was stuck to me, and she's, like, pulling it out. My body is yanking from her pulling it out, and I just remember telling her, like, I looked up at her, and I was like, do you believe in God? And she's like, yes, I do. And I was like, can you please pray for me? So she's like, I'm praying now. And honestly, I feel like that was just God. His presence was just there and I remember listening to I had my phone next to me listening to worship music just praying praying in tongues and you know I'm holding my body down on one side while she's yanking to try to get this stuff out and it was just oh, crazy um, they admitted me I, was, I got out two days before my birthday wasn't able to go on my trips obviously but um, just being in there was life changing for me. I got a couple of visitors. Um, I felt alone. I felt like nobody really cared. Uh, I felt like I wasn't really that important to people. My cousin came to see me. My mom and dad and my daughter came to see me. My best friend came to see me. Uh, one of my other friends came to see me. And then a, a girl on Instagram who see my story, she drove like two hours to come see me. And then one of the ladies from church. but. The people who I expected would come see me, they didn't come see me. Um, nobody really checked on me, so I really felt alone. But in that moment, I didn't want to think negative. Um, I just kept thinking about how God loved me. And I actually wrote a poem in there um, while I was in the hospital. And I recorded it while I was in the hospital, just thinking like, wow, like God really loves me. He loves me enough to save me, he loves me enough to keep me mentally strong and, and that week that I was in there it was just um, a real eye-opener uh, I didn't understand it 
but I kind of just try to stay as positive as possible. And, and during that time, I remember uh, posting live um, on my surgery page, and these girls, like some of them were being supportive, but some of them were so against Bella Bodies that they were upset that I wasn't bashing Bella Bodies. They were upset that, you know, I wasn't giving hate or anything like that. I just kind of was trying to deal with it myself and and not trying to be angry at anybody because I knew that infections could happen anywhere. I did find out, found out that I had a staph infection and two bacteria infections. Um, and thank God I listened to my body and went back to the emergency room because they just sent me home the first time with antibiotics because honestly I don't think they were trying to, to touch the surgery. But I had to heal from that. I was on a wound back for about a month and a half and it just was horrible. They took the wound back off. I no longer have to have it on anymore. And man, that, <laughs> it's been a month now, a little over, no, probably like a month now that I had it on. Where I am now, I'm still healing mentally. I'm, I'm not having flashbacks and breakdowns like I used to, but Mentally, I'm still trying to figure out who I am, I'm still trying to um, find myself again because I feel like I lost so much at that surgery table. Um, something that I thought was going to be the best thing that ever happened to me ended up being one of the most traumatic things of my life. When you're coming that close to death, it really does change you. You know, my wounds have healed. Um, I have been dealing with pain where my wound is at, and they told me it's the scar, scar tissue. I'm really just wanting to be a voice to the young ladies who still want to get surgery. Just really be aware and understand what you're getting yourself into. I just want girls to think twice before they go get surgery, whether it's here, whether it's out of the country. Just know that there's actually a risk that comes with it, and it's not what the TV makes it seem is it's not oh this is the before and this is the after there's actually challenges and consequences and risks that come with it you know you do have to love yourself for who you are and don't get it because of insecurities or because you just hate yourself or you hate your body do it with knowing the consequences of everything realize that self-love comes before anything because even with me getting the surgery and being happy where my body is at right now Self-love is something that I still have to work on, not based on insecurities, but more so just loving myself to fight for myself um, and not allow what I went through to cripple me because for a while it, it did mentally. But I pushed through and thank God that he was there to, to show me that he loved me regardless of anything. I, I thank God that I had the strength to push through. I mean, it was hard to see my daughter not know whether or not her mom was going to make it. I'm just thankful to be here. I'm thankful to share my story. I'm thankful that I made it through because honestly, if I wouldn't have listened to my body, I honestly don't think I would be here today. Ooh. I'm like trying not to cry. But it's just crazy how this journey really has just been really crazy. And I've really been like stronger than I feel like I've ever been this whole time. And I haven't really, you know, like taken the time to feel it, I guess you can say, because I've been really doing my best to stay positive and not really think about what has happened. I've just been trying to, you know, like stay strong. But moments like this really make me just stop and really just thank God that he's healed me and that he is healing me. He watched over me. His eyes never slept. Wiped away my tears each time that I wept. His love showed itself mighty. I never felt a lack of love. Incredibly amazing how he can love me from above. 
I felt his presence with each step, even when I couldn't walk. And he was my voice, when my vocal cords wouldn't allow me to talk. He loves me. Oh, how he loves me. Oh, how he loves me. Oh, how amazing and incredible it is for you to take a grain of sand, an equivalent to a human, and still choose to love me deeper than the ocean. To God be the glory.